welcome back. We're going to continue talking about our uh, components. And um, one of the components I'd like to talk to next is we, we went to tubes. And now we're going to talk about solid state devices. And um, one of the very first solid state devices, of course, was a diode. This is a silicon diode, and we're going to go more into that in a little bit. If you'd pass that around. What does a, what does a diode do? It's just like a tube diode. It only lets current flow in one direction, so it converts AC into DC. Then the transistor. The transistor is like a triode tube, except it doesn't require high voltages, and it's used for amplification or switching. And I'm going to go, when we get into solid state, we'll talk a little bit more about that. Next thing, IC chip. Yes? Um. Yes, and actually we've got that as part of the course uh, probably uh, in about two hours, in about an hour and a half. That's when we're getting to that, but yeah, miniaturization is a fascinating thing, and that's the thing about the IC chip we just handed out. You know, the transistor is basically, well, a diode is a PN junction. It's a silicon substance that has a dopant in it that causes it to take on a charge. One is a P side of a diode, one is the inside of a diode. And basically that complete that makes something called a depletion region in the at the junction. And if I bias it the right direction, then current will flow through the diode. And if I reverse bias it, then it won't until I put such a high voltage it causes breakdown. Yes. <clears throat> How do you make the bias? the bias? The bias is a voltage. A bias is a voltage that you, like if I have a battery, this is a 9-volt battery, so this could create a 9-volt bias. And let's say I connect this battery across a diode in a direction that will allow current to flow, then current will flow, and that's called a forward bias. Of course, I don't recommend it because current would flow to its maximum, probably burn out the diode, so I'd have to have some sort of resistance in that circuit. If I put the battery in the opposite polarity, then it would reverse bias the diode and no current would flow. And we'll get into that in a little bit more. Um, and then you're talking about miniaturization. Well, see, the transistor was a great miniaturization over the tube because the transistor, this little bitty thing, still allows you to do amplification. And you don't have to have three or 400 volts for like a tube does to run. A transistor will run on 9, 10, 15 volts as a tube has to have 300 volts to run. Yes? What was the general cause of failure of tubes? Um, I mean, I'm old enough to remember tubes, and I remember tube testers. Uh -huh. But what is it that caused them to Well, there was many reasons that caused I remember, you know, when I was growing up, they had tube testers in 7-Eleven. And you'd get a color TV, like an RCA or something, and it was, it, you would go to 7-Eleven, you'd get little dots and you would, with numbers, and you'd go stick them on your tubes in your television, pull them out, test them. Now, what caused the tubes to fail? Several reasons. One, they would have a gas develop in them. Uh, some of the substances inside the tube would gas out into the tube, and when you have a gas in it in the tube, it can't conduct because it's got a gas in it. Uh, sometimes the filament would wear out, wouldn't burn as hot, just like the filament and the light bulb wears out. Uh, sometimes uh, the uh, flow would actually damage the anode or the cathode. And there are just multiple reasons why a tube, yeah, a tube for it to work is absolutely a perfect vacuum. Over time, you'd have a leakage that would get air into the tube. So there's many reasons. Okay? Um, so, and then miniaturization, like that IC chip I just passed out. It has thousands of transistors in it as opposed to just one or two. Okay, the next thing I want to go into is connectors. And I want to spend some time on connectors just to get you all familiar with what they are. And I've got several different kinds, and let's name them in uh, no particular order. This one right here is a B and C, which stands for a British Naval connector. And we're going to put that on a wire in a little bit. This is a B and C. That, that's a crimp on and this is a screw on B and C. 
here and connectors are always defined in terms as male and female depending on which direction the connector goes this is a male phone connector going to two female RCAs it's an adapter RCAs were made by the Radio Corporation of America in the 1930s this is a male RCA connector and we'll put close-ups on the video this is an XLR XLR to a male phone this is a female XLR to a female RCA um, it stands for something left right it was used in um, it, back in stereo days but mainly it came into usage for sending balanced audio signals and let me do let me go let me talk about that for a second uh, in the early days of audio they discovered and I'm gonna have a hard time getting where the camera can see and everything but um, the RCA connector basically had a shield I want to talk to you about uh, balanced and unbalanced wiring schemes here um, if we have an RCA I'm going to draw it so like the RCA connector looks and we've got another one over here and this would be you know the uh, male RCA connector and it has a wire that goes straight through like that it goes from the center conductor on both male ends and then we have another wire which goes to the shield and that is actually a ground and what the problem is with this is is this wire here the wire in the middle is a antenna it um, wants to pick up noise and so we came up with the XLR connector and um, here's an XLR connector you can see it's a male XLR connector this XLR connector has three connections inside this male connector and uh, so we have a shield ground and then a high and a low and right here we see the RCA connector uh, which is just a shield and a connector in the middle this is an adapter that goes from XLR to RCA let me see if I can get a little closer look at that for you by zooming in uh, you can see that the three connectors are in there and put a little light on it see how those connectors are inside the XLR um, and now we'll take a look at the RCA and only one connector okay zoom back out let's take a look at our drawing so the problem is this center conductor is a great antenna and so if I have a sound signal over here like that and that's going into there and then we should have a duplicate going over here on this side but what will happen is let's say there's a noise spike that hits this antenna at that point it'll add and so instead of that you'll have something like that and so your noise and your signal combine and that's a big problem what we do is we build a transformer and we use what we call a center tap transformer it's got an iron core and we take the center tap and we go to ground we go the other side and we have the same transformer connected up in the different direction ground in the middle and then we go back out that way well let's say this is connected to a microphone okay this is a drawing of a microphone such as it is and one wire goes there and the shield goes there so there's our microphone going to our input on this transformer if we take 
our wires and we connect this wire to this wire and this wire to this wire we're now in what's called a balanced configuration and um, the balance means that when I have this signal coming in, let's say it's a sine wave, it's going on the primary of this transformer. This being center tapped will invert the phase, so that means this top one will be like this, and then the other side will be going the opposite phase. It'll be 180 degrees out of phase. Same thing over here. Okay. And also. Now what happens is, if there's a, a, the same spike of noise, these are still working as antennae, they're picking up signals, hum, noise, whatever. This spike of noise hits both of these and it's going in the same direction. Now what, what happens is, when these two signals that are out of phase are recombined with this transformer here, they have an output which is the original signal. If this spike of noise is going the same direction here and here, and if they're out 180 degrees out of phase, that means what happens is, in the combination, we have a positive going and a negative going, and they're identical, and they cancel each other out and make nothing. So that's the whole thing behind the balanced circuit, is that I can send a signal through a balanced connector like this, and no matter how bad the noise is, when it hits this output transformer, it's going to be canceled out and your original signal stays the same. That's called a balanced system. And that would be an XLR. This would be an RCA. Or it could be a BNC. Unbalanced typically uses a coax. These use three conductor, or two conductor twisted pair wire. Comes back through this transformer here. Uh, we'll have our signal again. Now the neat thing is, these two wires act like noise. They they act like an antenna, so they'll pick up noise. But let's say they pick up a a spike here, spike of noise. That's what's there. This wire is also going to pick up the same spike of noise. But when it gets down here to this transformer, this transformer is going to invert this spike from this spike. So I'm going to have this spike going positive here, and then I'll have another spike going negative there, and they cancel each other out. So this XLR effect, this balanced effect, means that I have eliminated the noise while I'm carrying the signal perfectly. That may seem a little complicated, but that's the real, like audio professionals, the ones that use it like for microphones and so forth, they use an XLR because even no matter how loud the noise is on this, it's going to cancel itself out and be eliminated. And that's particularly important for microphones because microphones have a really small signal. And so if I didn't have this cancellation going on, I'd be picking up all kinds of noise through the wire and, and, and that little bitty signal from the mic would be eliminated or have all this racket on it and, and lots of times when, when circuits aren't built well uh, you'll have like a hum hmm and uh, that's, that's the result of noise being picked up on a, on a wire that's acting as an antenna. Does that answer your question? Oh good.